Though you wouldn't know it by talking to people about comics, there are all kinds of comics other than superhero comics. Here at M.L. Miller Frights, we like to focus on horror comics, and new ones drop every single week. Remember, this isn't a set of reviews, just a list of what you'll find when you hit the comic shops this week in Comics Horror, January 24th, 2024. <laughs> Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comics Horror, January 24th, 2024. Well, here's some good old fashioned ass titties. Ass and titties. Ass, ass, titties, titties, ass and titties. As we take a look at comics that celebrate the female form. This week, my buddy Pat Shand delivers Van Helsing, Vampire Hunter number one, with a nice cover that's giving me Zatanna vibes. This issue looks back at a tale about a young Liesel Van Helsing, who's a descendant of the old crotchety Van Helsing from the Bram Stoker book. And not to be outclassed, Here's a cover from Coffin Comics that screams titties, titties, titties and titties. from the mountaintops. In this issue of Lady Death, Cybernetic Desecration, Lady Death takes on an evil doppelganger named Empress Death or something. But sweet Hiawatha, what a cover. Indie comics, especially indie horror comics, are definitely worth paying attention to. Free of corporate oversight and mainstream constraints, this is where the good stuff comes from. Dead Detective No. 2 features a newly deceased private eye who's trying to get accustomed to a city of the dead. This one comes from Black Box Comics, Bob Hayoka, and Fabio Lima Jansen. I love me a good old western horror mashup, and Dead Sky Comics offers up just that in A Splattered Western One-Shot No. 4, which actually seems to be a series of one-shots all glommed together. This one focuses on a down-and-out gunslinger who makes his way to Resurrection Hill and takes on death himself. Speaking of mashups, how about mixing the gangster genre with horror? That's what Al Capone Vampire number 4 does in this final issue from American Mythology Productions, J.C. Vaughn, Brandon Frame, and Brian Frame. Blood Moon Comics have White River Monster number 4 on tap. It seems there's a whole lot of monsters, not just one along the White River, in this comic by Keith Rommel and Wolfgang Schwant. And Banshees number 5 is the final issue of this series from Scout Comics. I haven't been able to get my mitts on this series yet, but I'm loving the covers of this Banshees series from Tim Daniel. Here's some more indie comics coming out this week. Skeeters, number two, is from up-and-coming artist Kelly Williams and writers Bob Franz and Kevin Cuff. It's about a town under siege by giant gross-looking mosquitoes. Over at Ahoy Comics, there's a new Project Cryptid issue out. It's issue number five, and in this issue, it features stories about unique cryptids and extraterrestrials with art by Lane Lloyd and, ooh, Gene Ha. He's always good. Nightfall Double Feature Number 4 from Vault Comics offers up a pair of dark, dark stories from the likes of Tim Daniel, David Andre, Daniel Krauss, Man House, and Chris Sheehan. AWA Upshot tells the tale of a millionaire who likes to keep prisoners in his basement for his own sick needs in Rumpus Room by Mark Russell and Ramon Rosanas. And the original creator of Gargoyles, Greg Wiseman, and artist Drew Moss pit the Gargoyles against a giant fire-breathing dragon in Gargoyles Dark Ages No. 5. Finally, Image is always the company to go to for potent horror. This week is no exception. Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino team up to bring another issue of the Bone Orchard mythos, Tenement. This eighth issue uncovers a traitor and reveals a bit more about the mystery of the apartment complex that seems to be a portal to a nightmare world. 
This series is kind of heady and trippy, but it's a solid scary read every time. And James Tiny and the Fourth and Martin Simmons finished their adaptation of Universal Monsters Dracula in this fourth issue. Each and every issue of Dracula has been a feast for the eyes, and this one will be just the same, I'm sure. Well, that was a nice handful of horror comics for the shelves this week, wasn't it? Surely there's something you'll find worth your time and hard-earned money. Let me know which ones look good to you down in the comments. Stuck inside